They started out so well, but Sabrosa and TSM have fallen from grace. Sabrosa's not performing to his full potential, and the team doesn't look as polished and explosive as they once did. So what caused the downfall of TSM, and are they holding Sabrosa back? Before jumping to Valorant, Sabrosa proved himself as a talented player in CSGO. His raw aiming skills and incredible game sense allowed him to predict enemy movement and slay without issue. He was so good, some accused him of cheating. These accusations were never proven, but they did leave a blemish on Sabrosa's CS career. Sabrosa just has a sick game sense right there, almost hitting that shot like five times in the smoke. But Sabrosa found a new home in Valorant alongside Wardell, Cutler, and Hazed. This new roster dominated the minor tournaments during the early days of Valorant under the Mouse Spaz moniker and it was enough to catch TSM's attention. Six able to get one, that's certainly gonna help, but Sabrosa puts the stop on it with the three-piece of his own! The renowned organization signed the full roster to represent them in the budding esports scene. Sabrosa cemented his role as an entry fragger, getting those early kills and setting his team up for success. They won the T1 and NSG Showdown and the FaZe Clan Invitational thanks to his quick aim. And even if he went down, there was always someone there to back him up. 1v1, it's just up to sick. He has been spectacular, but it's not gonna matter because Wardell gets the final shot. Even in their losses, Sabrosa was finishing at or near the top of the leaderboard, and his skills were enough to carry them to first strike qualification. One more spawn. One more spawn. At first strike, TSM adopted a three duelist style, making them one of the most aggressive teams at the tournament. They smashed through the main event, but it all fell apart in the final against 100 Thieves. They lost 3 1 in a very tough match, with Sabrosa managing 45 kills and 10 first bloods. They're annihilating. TSM, there's only two players left. There's a two versus four for TSM. They have to find a way out of this situation, but it's getting worse and worse. And who better than Hiko to look to seal the deal here in this grand finals as Carlos tries. He does all that he can, but it's simply not enough against a hundred thieves. They came second, but they haven't been this close to success since then. TSM failed to make it to stage one masters, once again coming up against hundred thieves in the final chance at qualification. Sabrosa played Omen, which added the pressure of smoking, covering teammates, and everything else that comes from playing a controller. This took part of his attention away from what he does best, fragging. Yes, I'm up from the top rope. Sabrosa had a great spot, but Asuna gives him the business. Nitro does it as well. It's these chaotic moments where 100 Thieves seems to shine. From there, it continued to go downhill. TSM didn't make it to the Challenger's finals in Stage 2, and not even Sabrosa could drag them out of their slump, only managing 30 kills in their knockout game against Ambox. Matters they're ready with that curveball, and... Oh, no. oh, then don't see... What? They don't see ready for it, but somehow they get the kill anyway. This is looking very, very problematic for TSM right now. Hayes is going to try to make the drop towards Hell, but the frags are coming here for ABX. They're making it all work in their favor. Well, Dell is the last man standing, but not for too much longer. That's... A wrap! TSM IGL Cutler consistently finished at the bottom of the leaderboards throughout the first two stages of VCT. He often played Sober, who doesn't usually pull off explosive plays, but the Org believed he was dragging down the team, so sent him to the bench. TSM have shown they're willing to take drastic steps to improve performance. CSGO veteran Brax was added as their sixth man in March, but he's been in and out of the team and has been reportedly dropped too. Another issue impacting TSM is their agent picks. While many teams use versatility as one of their main strengths, it's not working for TSM. Sabrosa's constantly swapping between agents and roles, and it means he's not able to excel in any of them. You only have to look at Masters Champion Sentinels for guidance. Their Starman 10 solely picks duelists, and they've gone on to huge success. <gasps> oh my god, he gets flashed! The team flash! The team flash! Magnum's in the smoke here, 10 Oh my god! Four. Magnum's got no HP, not like this! Sentinels! They're gonna get the defuse! They've done it! Sentinels are the Masters to Reykjavik Champions! TSM's most recent signing is a new coach, who may be exactly what they need. Chet is a CSGO coaching legend who's more than capable of whipping the team into shape. And most importantly, he can mold the team around Sabrosa and let him get back to what he does best. The question is, will Sabrosa benefit from these changes, or will the instability lead to more troubles? TSM have one of the best rosters in Valorant, with years of CSGO experience and an unteachable clutch factor. But they haven't been up to par in VCT so far. When Stage 3 comes around, we'll see if the changes they've made have any difference. 
If Sabros is able to get back to his best, they can compete at the top of North America once more. But if they keep failing, it surely can't be long before Sabrosa starts thinking about a move elsewhere. Hit that subscribe button for more Valorant content.